In 2019, Ineos's size is such that we could comfortably rest on our laurels. But that's not our style. Just this past year, we have made unprecedented investments, built new industry, and inspired historic achievements. Because at Ineos, we don't wait to see what happens. We make things happen. And that's why I'm here in Portsmouth, at the home of Ineos Team UK, our challenger for the 36th America's Cup. A few weeks ago, the team launched their 75-foot cutting-edge racing yacht. We're on location to find out more about the boat and the team's efforts towards victory in 15 months' time. Stay tuned for all this and more from around the company. It's time to get underway with InTV. Coming up in this episode, Britannia has hit the water and she's already flying. We find out all about this remarkable vessel. As concern about plastic waste grows, we look at the way INEOS is responding to environmental concerns. We're really focusing on how we can reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and have a more positive impact on the environment. Our new polypropylene pilot plant is opened in Italy and we learn more about this new groundbreaking technology. For sure, the reutilization of plastic waste is the key for the future. Our chairman, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, joins us to answer your most pressing questions. In an organization as large as INEOS, there's, there's always benefits in some level of geographic diversification. And as always, we'll provide the latest exciting news from across the INEOS group. Never mind the Rugby World Cup, the Football World Cup, the Ashes. There is one sporting trophy with a legacy of hurt stretching back almost two centuries, the America's Cup. Britain has never won it, but INEOS Team UK is looking to change that as they launch their astonishing new boat. October was a busy month for Team INEOS UK with the launch of the first race boat for the challenge of the 36th America's Cup. In keeping with naval tradition, the naming of the boat was left to its godmother, Julia Ratcliffe. I named this boat Britannia. Our Britannia resonates massively with the history of marine industry, marine sport in, in the UK, going back to uh, the Royal Yachts and then coming through now to the boat that we hope can win the America's Cup and bring it back for the first time in its history. I'd go on to a really special boat. It's obviously our first boat of this cycle, 75 footer, completely new concept of foiling monohull. So a huge amount of work and effort has gone into that design. With just over 18 months to create it, the time frame has been a challenge in itself. It's taken 90,000 hours to design and 50,000 more to build. While the construction has used cutting edge technologies to ensure she is ready to race, all efforts have been made to make sure that this iteration of the America's Cup is as sustainable as possible. With Ineos Team UK, we looked at the possibility of reusing recycled carbon fiber uh, for this campaign, treated their waste for their mold and also for a cradle that they are making to transport the hull. To date, over 1,000 kilograms of carbon waste has been recycled and gone back into parts of the boat. To reuse carbon fibre deposits is potentially a massive game changer. To avoid putting it in landfill and actually close the loop and then reuse it is a massive bonus for us. The future, I think it's, it's shaping up to be a really interesting time. That's why I've been delighted with the partnership and it's going to continue. It proves that we can actually use this in a more commercial market than perhaps originally intended. And I'm very proud to be part of this partnership with Ineos Team UK. They are using this great event of the American Cup to actually show a lot of people how you can use those new type of material composites, especially carbon, in a more economical and environmental friendly way. No sooner had Britannia been named and launched, the 75-foot race boat was packed up alongside its full support fleet, ready to be shipped to its winter training camp in the south of Italy. 
We're really excited about the winter training camp coming up in Cagliari. It's where we're going to race our first World Series event in the end of April. So it's a real natural fit for us in terms of the logistics. And obviously quite a lot warmer than, than the Solon. Our drive to be sustainable also covers one of the key issues of the 21st century, plastic waste. We've committed to developing a circular economy, changing the perception of plastic. Let's have a look at how we've got on over the past year. Plastic. In 2019, it's a dirty word. The embodiment of human excess. But it plays a hugely positive role in our lives, so the way we treat it needs to change. INEOS is interested in delivering a low carbon circular economy. So the carbon footprint of our products has got huge scrutiny at the moment. We're really focusing on how we can reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and have a more positive impact on the environment. At the recent K Show, the largest plastics industry trade fair in the world, INEOS showcased its new range of groundbreaking sustainable products. We're extremely excited to launch um, a couple of new products in the space of circular economy. One of those are our recycling compounds, so um, hybrid compounds which incorporate 50% uh, post-consumer recycled material so that we can deliver polyolefins which have got the same qualities as um, what we normally have. To make these products possible, INEOS has teamed up with Virador to provide the post-consumer material they need. As a founding member of the Plastics Pact, it's given us the opportunity to work very closely with companies like INEOS who share the belief that plastics has got a vital role to play in our sustainable future. Waste material from across the UK comes to sites like the one here at Rochester to begin the recycling process. Once the segregated plastics have arrived, uh, the material is cleaned and it's upgraded uh, so that it's a high quality finished product. Because of the process that we put it through, they can be used to replace virgin plastics in certain applications. The technology that INEOS have means it can hit even a wider audience and more demanding end applications. Demand for recycled plastic has soared in recent years and a new plant in Bristol is being built to help supply the plastic for INEOS. Our new plant at Avonmouth and our collaboration with INEOS will mean that there will be a new range of products that have got up to 50% recycled content directly from the source. And using facilities like this and our network of other facilities around the UK, we will maximise that resource and really drive the circular economy. Recycling takes many forms, including that of chemical recycling, where plastic is reduced down to its original monomer form, ready to be remade. At the K-Show, INEOS Styrolution launched a new range based on this process. We're especially proud to introduce our new Echo Grades of sustainable products, introducing a uh, ABS that's been mechanically recycled, and we're also introducing chemical recycling, taking polystyrene back to styrene and then back to polystyrene again. Effective recycling methods are key, but so is responsibly sourcing the right material when creating new products. We are introducing biofeedstocks into our cracker, into Cologne, through um, a tracked and certified process and be able to deliver bioattributed uh, olefins and polymers. And these products have already made an impact, as this October, Innovin became the world's first commercial producer of a bioattributed PVC called Biovin. It's a new generation of PVC. It substitutes 100% of fossil feedstock by a renewable feedstock not competing with the food chain. PVC is essential for modern life today. It's also recyclable and widely recycled. So PVC has strong environmental benefit and BioVin pushes sustainability even further. BioVin's attributes and reputation is already turning heads as Innovin are already making sales into the automotive, food packaging, construction and consumer goods sector, demonstrating Biovin's practical applications in the real world. With their product entering a new arena, there come new standards to adhere to. Biovin's sustainable credentials have already been certified by the Roundtable on Sustainable Biomaterials. 
The RSB are an independent organisation responsible for ensuring that companies like INEOS behave in a socially responsible way and carry out their business in a sustainable manner. INEOS has really raised the bar for the plastics industry. By selecting the most stringent sustainability system for their certification, they can demonstrate that their products carry high levels of sustainability, they result in greenhouse gas emissions reductions, and they displace fossil resources. These are just a few of the many steps INEOS are taking to drive forward the circular economy and make plastic a valued and sustainable resource. Sustainability is such a broad topic and it's about genuinely enabling a sustainable production environment. Not only production, manufacturing, end product use, we need to address all of it. Plastic is ultimately our core business, but we aren't waiting for change, we're leading the way forward. Our new polypropylene plant at our site in Italy is evidence of our dedication to creating a sustainable future. In TV, headed to Rotignano to find out more about this exciting new technology. The INEOS O&P site at Rosignano in Italy was founded in 1912. After 100 years of operation, the site's future looked uncertain. Until recently. Following the arrival of a new chief executive and operations manager, the site has seen a reversal in its fortunes. The atmosphere in the plant is, is good, the mood as well. The people are really committed and they also appreciate the change we are doing step by step and they are really appreciating especially the results. People are uh, motivated and they, they are pushing also the, the, the change. It's very important to have uh, a daily communication with people to tell them uh, what was running well but also to say to them uh, if something was not okay so they can rearrange the setup and can react. We had till now very good. We are working on different topics. First of all, to stabilize the performance of the site, especially on the EHS aspect, so zero injuries for us a must. So we have in this moment a different target, driving our site to a new level of stability, a new level of capacity, a new level of performances. This new positive attitude and increasing capacity is reflected in the number of big investments in the site, securing its future and helping it to fulfil its true potential. We have replaced all the reactors in this site over the last five years. So with this uh, big investment, INEOS can uh, exploit the real capacity of the plant and increase the reliability as well. So this is a very good investment. One of these investments is Project Bulgari, a multinational multi-million euro construction of a new pilot plant. Rosignano forms part of INEOS's research division. This team are working hard to incorporate more post-consumer waste into INEOS's products. But it isn't as simple as mixing fresh plastic with recycled plastic. That product would not have the right properties and would not meet the standards required of it. At INEOS Laboratories in Brussels, using their chemical and engineering expertise, they are developing new plastics that can include increasing amounts of recycled material. That technology is transferred to Rosignano, where their new pilot plant will test sustainable solutions to plastic production on an industrial scale. The market needs today are really moving into sustainability. How do we change our product portfolio into a more sustainable product portfolio? Thanks to this pilot plan, we will be able to develop new grades that are exactly following that market needs. And these new products really are quite important for us as a business. It's the whole idea for us to save CO2 during the lifetime and by recycling them back into new products, in fact, be circular and reduce the dependency on fossil fuels. INEOS can contribute a lot solving the, the issue with plastic. For sure, the reutilization of plastic waste is the key for the future. Constructed in Holland by specialist manufacturer Zeton, the completed plant was then broken down into sections and transported 1,500 kilometers by road to the site in Italy. There it was reassembled in just three days. We are proud to delivering such a plant to Italy 
I think it sets a landmark for Rossignano, uh, for their new investments in R&D and uh, to, to have the site also focusing on R&D. The whole team at Zetum, we are so proud that we just helped a little bit in getting that goal achieved for INEOS. The new pilot plant will be crucial in testing and developing new advanced polyolefin products for a wide range of applications. Products that will be fully recyclable and capable of working seamlessly within a circular economy. Installation of the new pilot plant uh, on the Project Bulgari here in Rosignano is a very good news and uh, it will be very good to develop our processes and our products. I have a lot of expectations from INEOS for the future of the sites and for the business. I believe that we can uh, help the environment uh, and the customer to solve the problem of plastic. And the experience and the competencies we have here in the sites and in the business too we can uh, really develop something that is uh, useful for the end customer and for the consumer to solve these issues. I think that the Ineos can play a, a very big role in this. With the pilot plant already up and running, just two weeks after delivery, it's a project that demonstrates a commitment to the future of the environment, to the site and to the people that work there. With so much going on, it's hard to pack everything into one show. So here's a roundup of all our other latest news. In September of this year, INEOS held a groundbreaking ceremony in Marl, Germany, to commemorate the site of a new world-scale cumene plant. The new state-of-the-art 750,000 ton unit is scheduled to be completed in 2021 and will be located in Evernick Chemie Park. Location was key in choosing this site, with great connections to the Marl Harbour and better optimization for integrating raw materials from nearby refineries and crackers. I think if you look around, there aren't as many investments in Europe on the, in, in the chemical sector as there used to be. So to have investments in a local area such as this that will bring jobs to the community is, is a big commitment to the area. In attendance was Germany's economy minister, Andreas Pinkwart, who believes the investment will be good for the area and the country. We are the place of the chemical industry in Germany. We are very interested to have companies like Ineos here in Northern Westphalia who invest in uh, the very innovative um, plants. So we are very happy to have this investment here in Mal and that we will see uh, excellent results in the future. After the purchase of OGC Nice this summer, INEOS chairman Sir Jim Ratcliffe came down to the club to greet the players and take in a game. Jim was warmly received by the fans, who invited him to take part in the game build-up as they played league champions Paris Saint-Germain. Across the world, over 2 million children are now taking part in the Daily Mile. With 10,000 schools signed up, 5,000 in England alone, more and more kids are feeling the benefit of exercise in school. When we started, we could quickly see that we had something that would, would go to other schools easily, that was transferable. But we never thought it would be 10,000 schools after four years. And it's been the incredible support of INEOS and the vision that they have for the Daily Mile, that we all have in the Daily Mile Foundation, that it should be for every child. So I think we're not going to stop at 20,000 or we're not going to really put a number on it because one day we think it'll be for all children. We are fortunate enough to have Elliot Kipchoge as an ambassador for the Daily Mile and he believes that no human is limited and that fits really well with the Daily Mile because no child is limited, every child takes part and it removes the barriers for all children. Alongside pioneering health programmes, INEOS have just completed a successful pilot to teach children about cleaning up the environment called Trash for Treats. The programme sees children rewarded with vouchers for food at a local store for each recyclable item they collect. The scheme is also sustainable and self-funding, with the proceeds from the recycled plastic going straight back into the programme. Across 10 disadvantaged primary schools in the Western Cape of South Africa, over 5,000 kilograms of recyclable waste was collected, with Mitchell Primary School taking the top spot. Every year, the graduate recruitment team from INEOS scour the globe in search of the best talent to bring into the business as part of the INEOS graduate recruitment scheme. We want people to be passionate about the industry and understand what we're doing, but that doesn't mean you have to be an engineer. So we have broadened out our criteria to look at other technical disciplines and actually even non-technical sometimes. 
think that makes it a fascinating place to work, particularly for young people. The team attends fairs at leading universities like the one here at Aachen in Germany to meet students and talk about the programme. I have already found a, a job which is interesting. So I think I'll be applying and uh, look forward to meet new people as soon as possible. Graduates also get the chance to visit sites to learn more about INEOS and meet those who've completed the programme. We have a lot of opportunities here on the site. Even in a technical role, you can easily switch roles. Uh, you get a lot of responsibilities and people will immediately look at you for answers. And it's your job to talk to other people and to find solutions for whatever problem is arising. We offer a very flat, non-bureaucratic structure, a lot of visibility to senior management and interesting roles for a variety of different disciplines. It's a very exciting programme to be part of and that's what we really want to make sure people realise. Back in 2006, with the help of INEOS, Rhys Jones became the youngest person ever to climb the seven summits the highest mountains on each continent, including Everest. Combining his experiences of mountaineering with that of safety, he now gives a series of unique talks to companies across the globe. This summer, he gave presentations at the Chocolate Bayou site in Texas. When I climbed Mount Everest and was sponsored by Enios for my final climb, I came home from that and I started giving talks about my experience. I was then asked more about my attitude to the risk and whether I could then use my story to talk to others about safety culture. It's not about avoiding all risk, it's about identifying it and minimising it. And there's actually a lot of parallels between the mountaineering that I do and what people are doing at work. One example would be a surgeon on Everest who had frostbitten fingers. And it was a classic case of somebody not turning back when they should, because there's always a point of no return where you have to make a decision. And if it's not safe to carry on, if you're risking injury, that's when you make the call, otherwise you have a big knock-on effect. Health and safety can be a very dry subject. And although it can be delivered with an in-house presentation, actually I think when it's most effective is when the audience is completely engaged. And if I can help with that side of it, they'll take it home, take it away with them, and it will have a longer lasting effect. INEOS is a huge global team. You have people covering a huge variety of different functions in their day to day. So if safety is at the heart of it and everyone's pulling in the same direction, then as a company, you end up much safer as a result. After his incredible sub two hour marathon, Elliot Kipchoge has been resting up back at home in Kenya in preparation for his next sporting feat. After Fiona, then I took some few days in, in Europe. Then I, I came back home. Then I start now to rest fully. After running 159, maybe I think the next day I will sleep the whole day, but uh, I was surprised that uh, I had a lot of energy. Elliot's hope was to inspire others to break barriers, which is exactly what has happened. The day after Elliot's triumph in Vienna, fellow Kenyan Brigid Kosge smashed the women's world record in the Chicago Marathon. But it's not just record-breaking attempts that have been inspired by Elliot's No Human Is Limited campaign. Back in INEOS, teams of staff have been attempting to run their own version of the INEOS 159 Challenge. Well, you know, the Energy Station kind of platform is being built around challenges, and we had the Tour de France Challenge early in the year, which was absolutely so successful. And also with Elliot running in Vienna, we thought, great, let's, let's set up a running challenge and uh, you know when we wanted to try and do something short and sharp that stimulated people to get out there and do some activities no matter what ability uh, and level you are. In Yossi's online sports hub, the Energy Station, challenged teams of employees to collectively run a full marathon every day for eight days prior to the race and it proved to be a big hit with employees. We had over 192 teams across the Ineos businesses uh, and we had close to 1,500 employees that took part in the challenge, which was fantastic. You know, it was, it was all about working together, having fun, and that's the ethos of the energy station and INEOS, really. If you've got a thirst for adventure, then make sure you check out the new podcast series launched by Bellstaff in October, The Road Less Travelled. Hosted by Reggie Yates, he delves into the extraordinary lives of a range of stars from across the entertainment world.
What made you choose that path that is so different to the one that had been laid in front of you? Anything is possible, and if you have talent and creativity, this is your moment. There are no rules to how you communicate your truth. If I failed, at least it was my failure. Listen now on your favourite podcast platform. Now it's time to catch up with our chairman, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, as I put your questions to him. Here we are in OGC Nice training ground. I've got a chance to have a quick chat with Jim. Just to have a look back over a pretty exciting year, 2019. Yes, what would be your real highlights from this last uh, last year? Well, I think the highlights split they split into two, really. They're the sporting highlights and the business highlights. So yeah. The sporting ones stand out, I suppose, quite dramatically because we were on the Tour de France, which yep. was an extraordinary experience. And then we broke the two-hour marathon in Vienna, Project 159 which was sort of equally remarkable, really. And then a whole series of things in business. So, you know, we bought two quite large businesses, about a billion dollars each, titanium dioxide and a composites business both based in America. And um, we've announced one or two large bills. We've got Project One in Antwerp, which will be the first mega project, I think, in Europe for probably a generation. We announced this uh, Middle East yep. project with Total and Aramco. A billion in the UK on various yep. projects. So I mean, it's it's been um, extraordinary year, really. Yeah, I've packed not, a lot had into. Many, not had many gaps. If you just sort of look back on the chemical side first, Project One. I mean, that is going to be, I think, transformational. It is a statement of faith in Europe, but also we are short of those two major products that yep. it will make, you know, ethylene and propylene. So whilst there is risk in, attached to a large investment in Europe, and of course all the world at the moment is either investing in. China or America, a little bit in the Middle East, but it's still it's pr predominantly China and America is where all the, you know, the money in chemicals is going. So we're, we're sort of stepping out from that. We don't have market risk yeah. because we're one and a half million tons short of ethylene and we're about 700,000 tons short in propylene. So we will immediately sell all the product because yeah. we'll sell it to ourselves, you know. I guess, you know, if you look at some of the other stuff that's been about geographic expansion as well. We've got the two big acquisitions in the US. We've announced the partnership in the Middle East. Yeah. How do you see that playing out over the next couple of years in terms of geographic expansion? In an organization as large as Ineos, there's, there's always benefits in some level of geographic diversification. Yeah. And you know there are four main regions in the world that makes chemicals. This will give us a sort of a, you know, a sensible position in the Middle East. And at some stage, I think we'll probably do something a bit more substantial in the Far East as well, but we're obviously big in Europe and America, which are the other two. So I think, you know, if you always look at the world, there tends to be, you know, there's always a bit of up and down. Yeah. America's doing well, Europe's not, the Middle East is doing well, China's not, whatever. So a bit of geographic yeah. diversification is a good thing for us, as long as we're happy with the sort of fundamental economics, which we are. Of course, the other area we've been doing quite a lot of work is on our new project uh, in automotive. Yes. Uh, we had a couple of big announcements. We announced the powertrain partnership with BMW in yep. March. We announced the manufacturing strategy and the name of the project in September. Yep. How do you think Project Grenadier is going? All going according to plan at the moment. I think everyone, we're all, we're all quite excited about that project because it's, it, it, in a sense, I think it's, it's probably going better than we anticipated. We've always sort of described this project in terms of its characteristics as this triangle of qualities, yep. which is reliability, looks and off-road capability. Yeah. And so we were trying yeah. to complete the three points on the triangle. The engineering aspects of this is all predominantly being done in Germany, Austria. Yeah. They're going to make a seriously good car. Yeah. And then the Brits really have got involved in the design and that, that turned out to be really much more challenging than I thought. But I think it does look a very cool looking car. It's a bit different from the modern SUV, which will look like a jelly mold. It yeah. doesn't look like a jelly mold. So it is quite boxy. If we've got a tick in the three boxes, reliability, off-road capability, and it looks pretty good, and the price level is quite sensible, it has the ability to be a very successful yeah. product. So coming back to sport then, we're sitting here in Nice. Yes. How do you feel about this one? Oh, he's got great supporters. I mean, you know, they really are loyal and fanatical supporters. Yeah. Part of the strategy here is is to try and develop and buy younger players and yeah. bring them through. It's a very attractive place for a, a young aspiring yeah. footballer to come to. And you know there are three Champions League places, there are five or six teams in France that can compete for that and Nice is one of them. And so we've got a lot to learn. People shouldn't expect 
success in 12 months. It's a sort of three to five year project, yeah. I think. But our aim would be to try and get into the Champions League on a regular basis. Yeah. That would be, I think that would be a very, very fine achievement here. Yeah. And then 159 in October, yep. I mean, that was something very special. For a guy to do 42 kilometres at 2 minutes 50 yeah. and sprint the yeah. last kilometre is absolutely extraordinary. And he's such a wonderful man as well. He's a part of history now, isn't he? Nobody yeah. will ever, ever forget that no. moment. I think also it's worth saying, Ineos did manage that event extremely well. It was in very short order. It was only about nine months start to finish, and it was meticulously organised. And it's one of those things that's so, so difficult to break two hours that you have to get absolutely everything mm. right. Mm. A lot of effort went into getting us there. Yeah. yeah. And looking forward to next year, a year from now we'll be in New Zealand. How are you feeling about where we are on the America's Cup Challenge? Oh. Well, I mean, it's anybody's guess, really, I think, the America's Cup Challenge. It is such an extraordinary challenge yep. for mankind. Nobody should underestimate the technical challenges. And then, you know, when you've mastered those technical challenges, you've got to hand it over to Ben and his sailing team to race it. Yep. I think the event in Auckland for the three months is going to be very, very exciting. Yep. It's going to be very tightly fought, I think. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed the show. It's been quite a voyage this year as we've made waves in the automotive, chemicals and sporting worlds.